before we start with this session let us quickly look into all that we know till this point we learnt about some equations that contain unknown variables denoted by these letters x or y or z and we have seen these equations are named as quadratic equation whenever the highest power of the variable is 2 also these variables may or may not be accompanied by some numbers before them which are called generally coefficients we can denote these coefficients by the letters a b and c so generally a quadratic equation can be represented as ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 okay so let me take one such quadratic equation let's say x square plus 4x minus 6 equal to 0 and if we have to solve this quadratic equation which means solving for the value of the unknown variable x we know till now just one method to solve it and that method is called the factorization method which we dealt with in our previous session now in this session we will solve this quadratic equation with a new method called completing the square method but before that let us see if this particular equation can be solved by factorization method or not so we know all the rules we have to follow under this method step 1 is to multiply the first term of the equation with the third term of the equation so we will multiply x square with minus 6 and the product which we will get is minus 6x square step 2 is to find the suitable factors for this particular product and we have discussed earlier what are factors they are nothing but the numbers which are multiplied to give us some another number so over here we will find factors for minus 6x square and we can only come across these four combination of factors now after we get all possible factors step 3 would be to choose any one set of these factors that we worked out right now which on addition would give us the middle term which is 4x in this case and if we are able to find that set of factor then step 4 is simply substituting that set in place of this middle term 4x and solving the quadratic equation further but in this case if we carefully notice it seems we don't really have any such set over here which on addition will give us the middle term 4x and therefore we cannot really go into step number 4 and solve the quadratic equation now at this point i would like to say it doesn't mean that the factorization method is ineffective or cannot be used what it only means is factors are actually not in an integer form for this particular example or you know they might be in some decimal form and it can become really tedious to find them manually so instead of going for factorization method and then finding out that it is difficult to find factors we can really save our time if we opt for the full proof method instead which is called completing the square method and it is different from factorization method in a way that we do not try to find any factors in this one instead as the name suggests we literally try to complete a square A square is a geometrical shape whose length and breadth are the same. And we will be using a little bit of imagination when we will try to solve this equation. So the first term that we see on this equation is x square and I can visualize it like a geometrical shape whose length is x and the breadth is x. And we know when length and breadth of a geometrical shape are same, we call it a square. So when we multiply them, all we get is an area. so x into x will give us x square so the first term x square is nothing but the area of a square whose length is x and breadth is x now 4x can be visualized like a rectangle whose length is x and breadth is 4 now i am not calling this a square because i do not know the value of x if only the value of x was 4 this would have been a square with length 4 and breadth 4 but since i do not know the value of x so i'm going to call it a rectangle whose length is x and breadth is 4 now i'm going to shift this minus 6 to the right hand side and i will get plus 6 now if you just carefully notice the left hand side that is x square plus 4x all i want to do is 
I want to combine these shapes and what I'm getting is a big rectangle whose length is x and the breadth is actually x plus 4. Now you would think I was talking about completing a square and all I'm doing over here is completing a rectangle which doesn't quite seem logical. So we have to make it a square. So please pay attention to this particular step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this rectangle with an area of 4x vertically. And what I'm going to get is equal rectangles with length x and breadth 2. So in my equation what I'll write is x square plus 2x plus 2x. Because if you notice I did not touch the length x. Instead I split the breadth 4 and I got two rectangles with breadth 2 and 2. Now in order to make it a square what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange these two rectangles and I'm going to bring one of the rectangles below and what I'm getting is a large shape that almost looks like a square. I'm saying almost because all we can see is an empty space over here. So we have to accommodate a small square in such a way that length and breadth of that square should be actually equal to the breadth of these rectangles that is 2. So in such a case the smaller square will have length 2 and breadth 2 and the area of that square will be 2 square because length into breadth will give us 2 into 2 which is equal to 2 square. So since I'm adding a small square with an area 2 square on my left hand side, so in order to balance the equation I will even add it on my right hand side. So if I combine all of these shapes together what I will get is a large square. So in my equation I will have to combine the areas of all of these shapes. So x square which was the area of the square we took initially and 2x and 2x are the two smaller rectangles and 2 the whole square which is the area of that smaller square and this will give us the area of a large square whose length is x plus 2 and even the breadth is x plus 2. So the area will become length into breadth which is x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 2 which will be x plus 2 the whole square and on our right hand side it will be 6 plus 4 which will be equal to 10. At this stage we can say we have completed a square which has an area of x plus 2 the whole square. Now if I want to find the value of x, the next step is very easy. I just have to take square root on both the sides. And root of x plus 2 the whole square will give me x plus 2. And root of 10 would be approximately plus and minus 3.16. And if I take even this positive 2 on the other side, we will get two possible values for x. One will be positive 1.16 and the other would be negative 5.16. So, for this equation x square plus 4x minus 6 equal to 0, after solving it we get two possible values of x. So this method is not difficult to understand, isn't it? And every time we do not need to make such diagrams, but we only need to remember that somewhere when we are doing this method we are completing a square. But let me give you a simple trick which will come in handy when you are solving any quadratic equation with this method. And for that let me take you back again to the step where we actually divided the rectangle with an area of 4x vertically. Which means we actually divided the breadth 4 of that particular rectangle in exactly two halves. And thereby we got two smaller rectangles with breadth 2 and 2. So if we see in this equation 4 is nothing but the coefficient of x which we divided in exactly two halves. So whenever we solve this equation the first thing that we do is we take coefficient of x and then we divide it by 2. And then further in the equation we added 2 the whole square on both the sides which was area of the smaller square because length and breadth of that square was 2 which was same as the breadth of these rectangles. So they are one and the same. So all we have to do in this method is see what is the coefficient of x so that we can divide it in exactly two halves. And once we do that, we take the whole square and add it on both the sides. And this particular step is very crucial because this is the step which is responsible for completing the square. And in the end, we know once we get the square terms, we just have to take the square roots in order to find two equal values of x. So I hope completing the square method to solve a quadratic equation is clear to you. The complete course for grade 10th CBSE Math is available in pen drive and SD card format.
click on the link to buy now. To know more, you may also check the description box below.